Last week, I posted a video called, You Do Not Need to Have a Lot of Money to Be Financially Stable, and y'all absolutely loved it. So for today's video, I want to give y'all a treat. I'm gonna break down exactly what financially stable truly means and what the stages of that looks like, but I also wanna give you something. This video has inside of it a free course. You don't have to click any links, you don't have to put any emails in, the course is literally within this video and I hope you like it because I have so much fun and I get so much fulfillment from making these videos for you. So we're gonna jump straight into it right now. So this is how you become financially stable. First of all, you need to understand exactly where you are in life. And then the second part is understanding where you're going and how you're gonna get there. So first, we're gonna look in the mirror. Second, we're going to see the pathway to get to where we need to get. And the way we're gonna do that is looking at something that I developed called the GAINS Principle. And within the GAINS Principle, there is the GAIN Scale. There's five levels on this GAIN Scale in which every single letter stands for which level you're on. And in order to be financially stable, you have to get past two levels, which are level G, which stands for getting started, and A, which stands for adulting. So the acronym actually came from my pure obsession with working out and physical fitness. That's the only reason it has that kind of acronym. But every single letter in the acronym and what it stands for makes perfect sense for where you're at in life. So without further ado, we're going to jump straight into the free course because y'all deserve it. I'm going to have... I'm gonna have the screen up here just so y'all can see it a lot better. So it feels a lot more like a course, but this will not be one of those boring courses where it's all luxury and monotone. Like I'm still gonna be who I am. I'm still gonna make jokes and still, still giving you relatable advice and a lot of it relating back to my own personal experiences. So let's see what we're looking at. All right, here is my screen right here. So Reggie's five phases of wealth also known as the gain scale, AKA the gains principle. I have a lot of names for it, as you can see, and they're very catchy. So we're gonna jump straight into the first slide. Getting started, this is where a lot of people fall on the gain scale when it comes to my channel, because there's a lot of move out videos, how to save your first $1,000, your first $10,000. To me, that's the level of getting started. So typically your goal is gonna be saving your first $5,000 moving out of your parents' house, finding a full-time job, and getting your life kind of set up. Not necessarily getting it together, but just setting yourself up, you know, for success. And so you're gonna value things like independence, self-improvement, and making more money. Because, you know, who wouldn't value those types of things? Especially once you hit 17, 18 years old, you're ready to get up out of there and start making it for yourself. However, this is a level on the gain scale that tends to take longer than you may think just because the economy is ever changing and inflation just keeps going up and up and the rich keep getting richer. You get the idea. So these things are going to maybe take a little longer than you think, but that's why the skills you need are going to be things like patience, discipline, research, and an action plan. So let's break this down a little bit. If you're someone who wants to move out of your parents' house, right? And you're just now getting out of high school or maybe you're even just getting out of college and you, you gotta get your money saved first. You don't ever wanna just say, well, I have a job lined up, so I wanna move out immediately. I understand um, as someone who has done pretty much just that, the only thing I really had to my name was like, I think I had $300, maybe at the most I had $1,000 to my name at the time, but I had graduated from college and I wasn't about ready for the fact that there was a security deposit at the townhouse that I was renting at the time. I wasn't ready for the unforeseen bills. I wasn't ready for the utilities. I wasn't ready for how much gas would cost. I wasn't ready for groceries, haircuts, all that good stuff. So it took me a few months to really feel comfortable doing those types of things. I wasn't even ready to do things like have my rent on automatic payments. I just didn't feel comfortable because I was like, no, I don't want to. No, I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to automatically take it out. I want to do it. So don't get too ahead of yourself. You should be saving at least $5,000 if you're talking about moving out of your parents' house. Um, I would even go as far to say you want to be in the five digits, 10000 20000 I mean, if you have more in there, it's not going to hurt you or anything. I'm not going to say you need to rush out of this, but a lot of people do get really comfortable in the getting started position. And you can. it, it does take longer to get out of it than you think. But if it's taking you a decade, like we're talking beyond the age of 18 now. If it's taking you a decade or longer, 
you're probably hanging out in there too long and you really need to do things to better yourself and really focus on those skills to self-improve and make more money. And that patience is going to be very, very key. Discipline is going to be very, very key. So uh, another port, uh, another reason of why this is called the gains principle is because to make gains, you know, like muscle type of gains, you got to have discipline. You got to be able to endure certain things that you don't want to do. Like I do stuff like I'll go to my Muay Thai class and then I'll lift weights and then I'll run three miles. Like that's kind of extreme, but it takes discipline to do those types of things, right? You're also going to need to do some research and understand what you're getting yourself into. How much does the average apartment complex charge for rent around you? And you don't need to be getting anything like uh, a two bedroom or anything like that. Again, I've done it. If you're single and you're by yourself, you only need to get a one bedroom. You don't need that much space for what? You know what I mean? Like it's just unnecessary and you're paying more than you would be paying for a single bedroom. And my aunt, when she was alive, she tried to tell me this and I was like, ah, What's an extra $300 to have a townhome that's two stories and have all these rooms and two and a half bathrooms? I thought I had it made, you know what I'm saying? But she was 100% right. So here's the thing. If you're gonna start saving your money up right now, you need to do so with the intent to, for it to hit a certain amount. You need to plan for a certain date to move out and you gotta consistently go to work in order for this money to go into your bank account as quickly as possible. That's what you gotta do. And once you've done your research, you create an action plan and then you're good to go. So I don't want you to sleep on this advice, but that is the G part of the gain scale. So we're gonna move on to A. This is the one that is something else. Some people will never get past this portion of the gain scale and I'll explain why. A lot of people within the adulting space, they already have a goal of things like get your life together. If you notice a lot of people who are adulting, they might be between the ages of let's say 21 to they could be in their early 40s. But we'll say from 21 to 35 is kind of where that is coming from because a lot of these guys and girls they have just graduated from college trade school or something whether they just got their master's degree their bachelor's degree some people stay in school to get their phd uh and for example my sister she just went and got her md you know what i'm saying there's there's a lot of different variations and there's a lot of things behind adulting that people really don't prepare for or understand until after the bills and debt hits you like it really really hits you like an uppercut you know what i'm saying anyway their goal is to get their life together become financially stable which is the topic of this video by the way pay down debt save money building an emergency fund and adding on to their retirement contribution aka their 401k the roth ira 403b whatever you have you might even have more than one of those things I just listed. But you're gonna value things like stability, security, comfort, and relief because most people who are adulting, and, and I feel like I probably know this better than anyone, you just wanna have some peace in life. You just wanna have some relief like, oh, I can finally sit down, I can finally rest, I can finally sleep at night. This is gonna take, these are the skills needed now. This is gonna take planning, control of your and when i say control i'm talking about control of your emotions adulting is a very emotional place to be because a lot of life changing things happen like and it's a roller coaster you might get a promotion you might get your first full time job ever you might be able to finally contribute to your 401k for the first time ever but people die in the family you get what I'm saying? Like things happen, emergencies happen, and you have to help people out that you really care about. You know, there's a lot of variables. Sometimes you might have hardships on the job. Like when COVID hit, so many people didn't have work or money. Like these are the types of things that happen when you're adulting. And people who are adulting are already out of their parents' house. And it's not saying that you're not an adult if you still live with your parents. I'm saying you're in the adulting phase of the gains principle and the gain scale when you're living on your own and you know hopefully that makes sense but anyway you also need to have responsibility and not just being financially responsible but also taking responsibility for your actions you have to develop almost like a bulletproof type of type of mindset so you don't let certain life events stifle you even when things that happen to you that don't seem fair 
You can't just put all the responsibility on your boss or on your coworkers or on your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your family members. Like you have to take some responsibility because at the end of the day, a lot of the times you might have made certain decisions in life that have put you in a lesser than desirable situation. So one thing you will notice about the adulting phase, there's so many goals, right? So you're trying to be financially stable. What does financially stable mean? Well, I, I don't want any debt and I want to pay it down significantly. Okay. I also want to save money. Okay. I also want to build an emergency fund and I want to contribute to my retirement fund. So obviously we get such a limited amount of money during our paychecks. Like you could be making a lot of money on paper, but when you subtract the taxes that absolutely strip your paycheck of most of what it's worth. If you didn't know, that's actually your biggest expense. It's not your rent, it's not your car note, it's taxes. But anyway, after taxes, after bills, you still gotta try to reach your goal. So you still gotta try to save some money, still build your emergency fund, still pay down debt, all while trying to put more money in your retirement account. So there's so many goals and you, you really can't do them all at the same time. And, and a lot of times you won't have enough cash to put money into all those things at the same time. And a lot of times you have to choose one. That's going to depend on what your priority is. What I would say is this. Saving money is the one thing you can do to show for what you've been doing. And your retirement contribution already comes out of your check prior to taxes anyway. So I would say if I was going to keep two out of these things, I would say the retirement contribution and the saving. And here's why. You need to retire at some point. You're not about to work for 20 years straight without putting a dollar into your 401k. That is crazy work. That doesn't even make any sense. You get what I'm saying? And that's no judgment, but I've known people who are in their 40s who didn't know what a 401k was and haven't put anything in there. And I'm like, you do understand that's how you retire, right? They're like, what? And then they put money in there. Now they're so impressed to see how much it's growing. But imagine if they put money in there when they were 20. That's what I'm talking about. So again, I will say it. It bears repeating. That is crazy work to work for such a long time without putting any money in your 401k. You have to have money growing while you're doing all this hard work. Not doing so is nonsensical in my humble opinion. Anyway, in saving money is one thing you can do to show for your hard work because yeah, you could pay debt down. Let's say you have 20K in debt and you pay it all down. And of course the interest rates in there. So you end up paying more than the $20,000 over time. But then if you don't have, if you haven't put any money in your savings and you lose your job, yeah, you, you're debt free, but you have nothing. You have no cash on you. You don't have a savings. You might have whatever is, is in your checking. So in my opinion, I would focus on one or two of these at a time. And then depending on your interest rate, this is the only caveat about the debt part. If you have debt that's eating you alive, like credit card debt, for example, 20, 30 or more um, percent interest on that. Yeah, you got to you got to take that debt out before it takes you bout out. You don't want to be bout out now. That'll get you back to here. Getting started. You don't, no, no, no. We're not moving forward to go backwards around here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to prioritize what makes most sense to us. And a good rule of thumb is if you have a high amount of debt, you need to go for paying down the debt and saving money. Okay. That makes sense because at least you're paying down debt and you have something to show for all your hard work. You're able to save money. And I would even say you could have some money going into your retirement. You don't have to have a lot. You can even turn down the amount you're putting in there. If you have a debt situation, I would say then focus on paying down debt and saving the money if it's a high interest rate. And then any chance you get to work overtime or to put some extra money towards that debt, you got to put it in there because you can't allow yourself to be paying pretty much double what you owe just because you paid off your debt so slowly that the interest rate just kept increasing the amount that you owed. That's why you want to stay out of that in the first place. That's why when you're in your getting started category, you need to learn as much as possible about not getting into a situation where you're in so much debt that you screw yourself so that by the time you do move out, now you're mainly paying for debt. You get what I'm saying? And, and trying to stay afloat. We're not trying to be swimming and drowning here. We're trying to be stable. That's what this is about, right? Being financially stable. In order to get there, you have to have some preventative me measures. But if you're not in that category and you, you, you still have some things like debt or you have some problematic things going on, that's okay. But you really have to focus on it and really aim 
with all of your energy to get rid of it. A lot of us work for the weekend so much, but sometimes you got to put in some extra work to eliminate your problems so that they don't last for years and years on end. But the good thing about adulting is it builds confidence with everything you do because once you have a good chunk of money saved up, now if you're coming from the getting started category, you already have a good amount of money saved. But if you were somebody who is already in the adulting category, like in real time, like you already moved out and everything, it might look a little different for you just because you might already have certain things. So the good thing about adulting is when you're saving money, you feel good once it hits a certain amount. Once you get a few thousand dollars in there, you start to feel more comfortable. Like, you know, if you lose your job, you're not going to be in a catastrophic situation. It won't be ideal, but it won't be catastrophic either. Once you start building your emergency fund, you're going to start really feeling good, especially if you put it in a high yield savings account and it's growing interest every month. And once it hits the five figure mark, you're going to start feeling good. You're going to be like, OK, yeah, I'm doing something. You know what I'm saying? If you have a lot of debt, like let's say you have student loan debt, you'll feel good paying it down. But you'll also feel good looking over, smiling because you got money in your saving account and in your emergency fund. You get what I'm saying? You'll feel good when you look at your retirement account and you're like, man, I'm up to $60,000. You know what I'm saying? Like these things take time, but they don't take that long. Like I started my current 401k back in 2019. Right now it's in the 80s, like 80,000 and something dollars. So it doesn't have to take that long if you really, really think about it. And of course, with company matches, that money's gonna go up even quicker and things like that, especially if it's invested in a good fund. But all I'm saying is the things that you build when you're in your adulting phase of the gain scale, you actually build a lot of confidence. And these are a lot of the building blocks because this whole thing is cumulative. So if you take what you learn from getting started and bring it into adulting, you're going to be so far ahead of the people who were already just adulting. You know what I mean? That didn't know about the getting started stage. They didn't know they should have, you know, started studying about personal finance before they moved out and saving a certain amount before they moved out. You're going to be ahead of the adulters. You get what I'm saying. And within this phase, the, the main thing you got to be careful about is not getting uh, ahead of yourself. That's the best way I can put it. Not getting ahead of yourself because it's easy to do that when you get promoted or you get even just like a, a 5% raise or something like that, because that's a very exciting feeling. You're like, yeah, I'm getting 5%, you know, 5% could be a few thousand dollars and you're like, I can do something with that money, but you might overestimate how much money that really is. And that's the danger behind. It. And that's why I spoke about that so much in my video about you don't need a lot of money to be financially stable is simply because if you, if you start thinking that, let's say you get a $10,000 raise, that's really only $833 extra per month. You can blow right through that. I'm not saying it's a little bit of money. I'm saying it's very easy to spend very quickly if you're not careful, especially if you take out an auto loan because you upgraded your car and the car literally costs like $800 a month. You're only seeing $33 extra dollars that month. So you've effectively upscaled your living so much that it's competing with your salary. And that's pretty much how I came up with the term of maxing out your salary. You don't want to max out your salary. You want to keep your expenses the same as your salary increases as best as you can. I know inflation is a thing, but as best as you can. And even if it goes up a little bit, that's fine. But don't do this where your expenses are now like neck and neck with your salary or even surpassing your salary. That's what we want to avoid during the adulting stage. That's going to contribute to your stability, security, comfort, and relief, which are your values. You get what I'm saying. We're going to move on to the next one, but those two right there. If you really want to be financially stable, G and A, getting started in adulting, you have to pass those two first. Once you really start hitting stability, your goals start to change a little bit, and this is how you stay financially stable. So there's getting financially stable, right? And then there's staying remaining financially stable. So now we're on I, which stands for investing wisely. 
And so the goal is to start building that wealth. You've already started with your 401k, right? And you might even have a Roth IRA. And I talk about the differences in, in other videos. I, I don't have the, the time for it in this specific video. I just want to give you the concept. But you're, you're going to be working on building that wealth, making money in your sleep, which is extremely important. People think that's like a pipe dream. It's not. It's, it's a very real thing. And I literally teach how to do it and growing your retirement accounts. And that's not the only way we're going to grow our money, right? If you really want to see how growing money works and making money in your sleep works, just watch literally every single episode of the Wealth Journey series that I put together because it is showing you in real time what my net worth looks like and how it grows over time. And it's already grown a lot this year. But anyway, they value the, the, the investors, the investing wisely people, they value time, freedom, passive income, and longevity. Don't sleep on that. Longevity is saying like, all right, over the long term, this, this is the long-term plan. Over the long-term, I'm financially stable. I don't have to worry about anything and I'm making money in my sleep. That's an area where you're gonna want to aspire to be to and this is the area where I would consider myself to be at. I just passed the adulting stage. Now I'm in the investing wisely stage. I'm just focusing pretty heavily on investing. But the skills needed are gonna be stuff like investing basics, which I do teach about, uh, commitment, and saving money to invest. So like I said, this is a, a building block series. So everything you learn from getting started in adulting, you have to apply the same thing to investing wisely. You still have to live below your means. I'm not saying you have to live like your broke or anything. You can definitely upgrade some things at this point, but you don't want to do it too much because you have to still see the vision that you have for yourself. You still have to see, oh, I still want to build wealth. So this extra $500 I got this month, Maybe I'm not going to put all of it towards fun and games and leisure, right? Maybe I'll use some of it for those things, but now we're going to, how much extra can I invest this month? How much more can I save this month for the sole purpose of investing? Not just growing your retirement accounts, but having your own individual investing accounts. So you have things like your Roth IRA and your 401k. That's all well and fine. But what about your own individual investing account? So for me, I have a 401k. I have a Roth IRA and I have an individual investing account. And if I had not built my own individual investing account, my net worth would be over $30,000 less than what it is today. Why? Because the investments in my individual investing account have grown over like 130%. And I haven't had the investing account for that long. I've only had it since 2020. So in four years, 132% return. Yeah, so that's more than double than what I put in. So that's what I'm saying. This is what I mean by investing wisely. You have to have patience to do this. You have to learn something about investing to do this. And you have to have that commitment and continuously see that vision because I've had this account when the stock market was down, when it was up, when it was back down, because literally it went down in 2020, went back up in 2021, went down in 2022, back up in 2023. Like it's, it's a roller coaster. But I kept committing and I kept saving money to invest. And this is an area that I'm very much aspiring to get to. This is an area that I'm very much aspiring to get to because I really want to have a family in, you know, the near-ish future, right? And I want to be able to make a lot of money, make a lot of good decisions, not because I want to have all these materialistic things, but because I want to provide a sense of security and stability and just something to where people aren't going to have to worry about money. That's like a curse in a lot of people's families where you have to really worry about money and it's a very stressful event. And if you didn't know, that's how a lot of marriages end because of money. And so when you look at letter N, which is net worth accumulation, the goal is grow wealth as much as possible. So that's talking about your savings, your investments, that's your cash, that's your investing accounts, that's your retirement accounts, and then taking it a step further and start saving and investing for your kids. And I'm not necessarily just talking about investing for them when they're a teenager. I mean, like when they're a baby, like by the time they hit 15, 16 years old, they already got 
over a six figure net worth, maybe even in the millions. That's a whole different level. That's a, some people can't fathom that, but I'm here to tell you it's 100% possible. And then of course be 100% debt free. So if they had student loans, no more student loans. If they had credit card debt, no more credit card debt. And also if they had a house that they were paying, a mortgage that they were paying down, no more mortgage. This is like this is a high level. A lot of people hit this when they're older or a lot of people don't ever hit this um, level of success when it comes to the gain scale. So, but it's worth going for and a lot of people will start to hit this level now that financial education is becoming more popular. I believe a lot more people will start to hit this level. I, I, I would call this like a pinnacle, like people who are adulting in their they feel like they're behind and they're just trying to get their life together. They look at people who were in the net worth accumulation stage like, wow, I wish I could do this. You don't have to wish. You can get there. That's the that's the amazing thing about this. You can get there. Just listen to your boy. I will help you out because I done been through a lot of this stuff um, in the adulting and getting started stage. And I can help you out. Anyway, the value is sustainability, growth in financial comfort financial comfort is not it's no longer just like being able to finally take a deep breath like oh i can finally relax no like financial comfort is like if i lose my job i will my finances will not feel it you get what i'm saying it's like you have so much money that's making money that if you had to you could just take a small percentage out of your investments and get paid like that and not have to really worry about it. Like basically you wouldn't lose your house. You wouldn't lose your car. You wouldn't lose, you wouldn't have like tension between the family. That's what I mean by financial comfort. I'm not saying that you wouldn't notice the difference between a paycheck and not getting one, but I am saying that you would be so comfortable that you wouldn't go bankrupt. You wouldn't really take a big hit financially when it comes to the absence of paychecks. Like you're not relying on getting paid. You're only doing your job because you like it, but if you wanted to retire, you could have five years ago. You get what, that's what I'm talking about, but don't sleep on the sustainability and growth because that's what it's all about. It's because people always say, well, you can't take it with you when you die. You can't take your money with you. No one's trying to do that. That's silly. I done got upset and got started in one of my, my other videos yelling at the camera. I'm not going to yell at the camera in this video because this is an educational video about the gain scale and how to be financially stable. But I'm going to just say like people sound crazy when they say that to me because I'm like, well, I'm not doing all this hard work because I'm trying to take money with me like to the grave. No, that's crazy. I, I want to build something. I want to build a family, a legacy, right? And I want my kids to be able to have a nice net worth so they don't have to go out here and struggle. I'm not saying that I'm going to hand everything to them, but I'm saying they are going to have accounts in which the money grows at an exponential rate. And by the time they hit an adult age, they will have more options to do more things. I would still have expectations of them, still expect them to work and things like that because they're not about to be lazy around me that's my number one pet peeve by the way laziness that's why i'm so active right now i can't stand being like i can barely stand to sit down and watch tv for a few hours so that's what i'm talking about anyway tangent over the skills needed are expanding your knowledge budgeting for freedom not budgeting to invest not budgeting to stay alive and survive but budgeting for freedom and that means budgeting your time how many of y'all do that i just started doing that budgeting your time but also not just worrying about how much money you can put in your investments but now let's take a back seat from my investments let's look at my kids investments how are they doing how much money can i put in there extra to make them succeed and also budgeting the money that you currently have within your investments to see how much it would take per month for you to withdraw from that without affecting the principle within the investment in order to be free, financially free. That's what budgeting for freedom is. And budgeting your time is nothing but just putting certain things in your calendar. You don't have to necessarily put stuff like um, going to the bathroom or, or eating in your calendar, but stuff like dates or family nights or do not disturb time because sometimes you'll find yourself if you're like me, 
working on like your work stuff at your job outside of work and then you're not fully present in the moment with the people you care about and then they get mad at you so to avoid that budget your time you're budgeting for freedom right you better do it with your time and your money if you want to truly be free that's all i'm saying i'm not in this category yet but i know something about it now i created it so i should know something about it and last but not least intentional planning let's get to the last one succession Retire happily is the goal. That's the goal. We don't we don't do all this work for all these years to not retire. And we don't do all this work to not retire happily. So not only are we not going to be going back to a job once we retire, unless we just want to a reward or something, but we're also going to retire in a place where we feel fulfilled and like we've really done something in life. Um, the goal is to position your family to never be in debt again. So that enough like that within itself is a crate that would be a crazy amount of fulfillment for me because i know how much of a pain point that is for people and then pass on your wealth that's what succession means you're taking what you got and you're passing it on to the next generation for their success and that continues to build that's how the rich get richer that's how all these mansions and nice houses are built and all these great things. And even if that's not your goal, because that's not my goal, that's how it happens. You see the vision, you start off small, you end up big, and then boom, you pass it on. You're not trying to take it with you to the grave. You're just trying to take it with the next generations that follow you. And that's when you know you've truly done something special. This is something we're striving for. Again, a lot of people don't make it here, but there's no reason you shouldn't try. And, and frankly, you can do this. You can get here 100%. And I just know, I just know where I want to go and I know where I'm going to be at. That's where I'm going to be. And you have to speak that into existence as well. And you have to do the work, you know, in between to, to make these things happen. But anyway, the values are legacy, generational wealth, and financial safety. It's not even just about comfort anymore. It's just safe. Like there's nothing that could happen financially that would ruin you. If a certain family member falls sick and you have to spend $30,000 on a medical bill or something, that is not going to tear you apart. That is not going to stress you out. You're going to have it. Obviously, for one, the family member is way more important than $30,000. But two, you have just so many robust accounts that no matter what, you can't, you can't spend so much money that they run out. You just, you just can't do it. Like you can try, but you're not going to be successful in running out of money. Because when I say investing has an ex exponential value where it grows your money exponentially, it truly does. It will blow a lot of people's minds, but it gets to a level where you, you can't possibly, you can't possibly spend it all if you tried. And that's why it's called being wealthy and not rich. When you're rich, you can spend a lot of that money, but the money's not necessarily making more money for you. But when you're wealthy, oh my God, there's nothing you can do to get rid of the money because even if all the money's gone, more money's coming because you're getting a check every month. But even if most of your money's gone, more money's still coming. Like It's like an endless sea of blessings of just money, 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 money. You're going to get there, I'm telling you. Anyway, skills needed. Goal setting, managing multiple accounts, and that's extremely important because even at, at my stage, uh, you, you've probably seen my net worth trackers. I have so many accounts up there. If I didn't have my net worth tracker structured the way it is right now, I would forget about some of the accounts that I have. And if you haven't downloaded the net worth tracker, I highly recommend that you download it. And last but not least, sticking to the plan. That is the hardest thing. I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now. That is the hardest thing. It's hard to stick to a diet. It's hard to stick to a workout plan. It's hard to stick to doing something every day, right? Because things happen. And a lot of times on the hard days, we're like, ah, I just won't do it. It's raining outside. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go for a run today. I'm not going to work out today. Uh, I had a long day at work and I feel like because I got through it, I need to, you know, enjoy myself with the dessert or a drink or something. Right. And, and you start to tell yourself these stories, kind of feeling sorry for yourself. You start to tell yourself these stories that you deserve a day off of your goal, by the way, you deserve a day off. And then on your hard days, you don't do it. So you don't get stronger. And what happens is the days that are supposed to be your easy days become hard, right? And so the thing is, 
if you don't stick to the plan and you don't invest one month or you don't save one month or you overspend in a category to treat yourself but it has adverse effects on your account because you overspent and whereas that money could have been growing for you this whole time and let's say you were only going to invest three hundred dollars but you ended up spending five hundred dollars on some shoes that you didn't need those shoes ain't making you no money and now your investment isn't even growing that investment could have grown into five hundred dollars over time but now you're out five hundred dollars and now that two hundred dollars you would have still had left would have lasted you through the rest of the month until you got your next paycheck these are very real things and so i'm not saying these things lightly at all Sticking to a plan is crucial. Are you gonna have your off days? Absolutely, everybody does. Nobody's perfect, we're all human. But if you get into the habit of not sticking to the plan, you will throw yourself off course for years. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't wanna go on too, too long. And I hope that this free course was very valuable to you. And I wanted to give back to you guys and give you guys something special just because y'all you know, have shown this channel a lot of support. Y'all really like the topic of financial stability. I really like the topic of financial stability and I just wanted to really show you what it looks like once you become financially stable and then what there is on the other side after you become financially stable. As you see, there's three stages more to follow financial stability if you want to go for them. And you can do it 100%. If you do need my support or my help, I do offer consultations. You can sit one-on-one -on -one with me. We can talk about these things. I also have my free trackers, my net worth tracker, my, my net worth tracker, my savings goals tracker. I have all that stuff specifically to help you along your financial journey and stay tuned for my wealth journey episodes so you can continue to watch my money grow and see what is possible. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really had a lot of fun making it and I want you to have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video.